Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Transnet offered an update on its capital program when releasing its financial results this week. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the reasons behind moves to pay back the investment plan. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What are the main shifts that have occurred to the Transnet CapEx plan? The main shift not entirely new. I think we've got the market demand stra strategy, the MDS, which was launched in 2012 and th there's been signaling from Transnet that they will have moved to a validated demand strategy. So they were going to first see whether the demand is materialising before they invested. But what we're really seeing is now that coming through in the numbers. So last year Transnet spent around a 29 or just over 29 billion on capital, which is nothing to, to sneeze at. But it's w it's well below the uh, 33 billion that they uh, that they spent in 2015, and the trajectory under the MDS was supposed to be a rising rising one. So we're seeing a, a pairing back. And for this year, we've seen quite a, a sharp uh, pullback to around the, the sort of 23 billion rand a level that uh, Transnet will spend in the, their 2017 financial year. So we can see that the, the sh the, as they've looked at the projects, mostly in the mining uh, sector, so iron ore and coal related projects, they've had to look at whether the demand is going to actually materialize given what's happened in the commodity environment. And uh, th we've seen an iron ore, for instance, uh, uh, appearing back of about 12 billion rand in capital investment over the next 10 years that was expected to be spent. That is now not going to be spent unless conditions change. And we've seen that a number of uh, projects in the coal space um, have also been, uh, you know, deferred. Uh, you know, there's the, the plan to open up the Waterberg. There's the plan for the, uh, the Swazi Link. The trigger hasn't been pulled on either of those uh, projects yet. And I think that uh, Transnet is now waiting to see whether uh, the volumes are going to materialise before uh, they start coming through with big investments in both those areas. There is still, the, uh, there is still material uh, uh, investment in both the coal and the iron ore space. About 15 billion is going to be spent on the iron ore line. But what the MDS was looking at was raising volumes to well over 80 million tonnes down the Sishin Saldana line for iron ore. We're now looking at really maintaining around the 60 million ton level. And coal, you know, we're talking about the 100 million uh, ton plus type levels. And, uh, you know, we saw coal volumes fall to around, I think it was 72 million tonnes last year, um, and maybe recovering to 75 million tonnes in the current financial year. But that's well below the sort of levels that were being achieved in in 2015 of 76 million tonnes. So you can see that the commodity uh, prices have impacted on the miners and now are impacting quite uh, materially on Transnet's capital program. Another key point was the emphasis being given to public-private partnerships. Yes, I think uh, um, over the last few years, Transnet has quietly been working on what they call public sector participation projects in a, in a number of areas. Uh, these are starting to come to market in some form or other. I think partly that they want to share the risk and partly that it is a, a strategy that's been uh, dictated, I think, largely from uh, uh, government. They would like to see more public-private participation in the space. Uh, and we've got, obviously, Operation Pakisa in the oil and gas uh, terrain where, they've, where it's really much, very much a, a PPP-type uh, project. So we're starting to see some of those come to market. Um, seen the uh, the Tumbo Springs inland port uh, request for proposals is now out. Uh, there's some controversy around the, the zoning uh, of the land there, and it's going to be interesting to see how Transnet responds to some of the issues raised around the the, the zoning in that uh, in that Akureleni space. But the, that uh, that is out into the market. We've seen expressions of interest in other areas in the oil and gas space and RFPs. Um, so, and then there's of obviously the branch line uh, concessions that are this perennial issue, and some are starting to come through. But there's a number of mining-related um, uh, PSPs, as they call them, uh, also sort of knocking around in the Waterberg and the Swazi Link. And those we'll have to see whether there's going to be appetite for all those. Again, also the oil and gas environment, you can imagine it's not where we were when, uh, uh, when this was initially envisaged. Uh, or, or propose. So th I think they're, they're going with quite flexible models for Saldana Bay in terms of trying to get 
um, uh, these uh, offshore, uh, an offshore supply base is one of the things. There's this uh, LNG terminal. So we're going to have to see how those uh, pan out. Obviously, this government is very keen on th this gas to power program. So I think around the LNG space, um, we're going to see some movement there. Uh, they are not just from Transnet, but also from the Department of Energy side, so expressions of interest out in the market. RFPs, it's gonna, we're going to have to see how what the response is like. But we're definitely seeing some momentum around uh, PSPs from Transnet, which is, uh, I suppose, long overdue. The program is core to government's larger infrastructure program. How will this pullback affect the economy and the sectors that Transnet serves? We really see the construction sectors taking a lot of strain. Uh, you know, both Eskom and Transnet were expecting to spend much more than they are currently on their different programs. These were sort of initiated uh, uh, either just post the financial crisis where things looked like they were recovering or, or ahead of that. So there was a very different GDP outlook factored into the assumptions for both Eskom and Transnet. Both are, you know, are sort of trying to do cash preservation as a, as a major priority. So any capital projects that can be deferred, they are deferring. Plus, the private sector really has no appetite at the moment, given what's happening uh, in the economy. We saw the, the UNCTAD or the United Nations report uh, on foreign direct investment showing that South Africa is at a 10-year at a low in terms of foreign direct investment. That was in 2015. The outlook for 2016 and that doesn't look you know, uh, much, much better. So we're seeing uh, quite an investment slump uh, in, in the area where construction and construction services would be playing. And we're still seeing quite weak business confidence. The, you know, Transnet's emphasizing that the MDS remains counter cyclical investment program, remains intact broadly. So they're talking about 340 to 380 billion rands worth of investment. That was really the initial cycle is going to be over seven years. They're now talking about a 10 year horizon, which is, you know, changes the way these projects get released into the market and the cash flowing around these projects. So this will. This does have an impact, uh, but it's still, I think, broadly there. And I think uh, we're going we're to see, well, they've spent so far 124 billion on the MDS, and there is still more project. There are these other projects still to come. So it hasn't gone away entirely, but the pace has definitely slowed radically, that which affects uh, everyone that supplies into this environment. So I think that it's obviously understandable, but it, it definitely isn't having the economic stimulatory effect that government initially anticipated from, from these projects. And I think what we'll see now is there's going to be a larger focus on local content around these programs because uh, I think there's going to be a view that is we're going to try and limit the export, what some people call ex the import leak or the import component of these programs to try and use these uh, different um, initiatives as uh, as stimulation for local manufacturing and for the construction industry, uh, but uh, you know that's easier said than done. And uh, we can really see with the the designations in the locomotive procurement program around uh, Transnet's buying 1,064, that the very mixed results there in terms of local content. So I think that is going to be a focus area, but again, achieving it's going to be difficult. And there's also always the moral hazard around localization of corruption and, you know, uh, services not being delivered as they should, you know, in a, in a totally transparent way. So there's going to have to be an emphasis on trans uh, transparency when we go with these local content programs. But I think definitely infrastructure is part of the NDP. It's, I suppose, kind of uh, integrated peripherally to the nine-point plan to try and reignite growth in the economy. And it's definitely not going to play the role I think that it was once envisaged to play. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.